I'm professor of physics and mathematics at First Nations University. I'm going to talk about my project. It's called the Weisman Mathematics Contest. I initiated this contest uh, 10 years ago, exactly to, in 2008. That is for, um, uh, initially that was for grade 4 and 5 students of First Nations schools. Mm -hmm. uh, then we uh, extended it to grade 6 as well. The, uh, pr at the beginning, the project was supported by NSERC, uh, Prama Science uh, Program. But now we are doing, uh, we continue the project. And within the project, we provide some preparatory math uh, materials on mathematics to First Nation schools and math teachers across Canada, from coast to coast. Mm -hmm. And we started in uh, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and Manitoba, but now we have students from all, almost all provinces. And uh, this year we have from BC to uh, Ontario. First, we sent the um, preparatory materials. Uh, then schools registered for the project, uh, for the contest. And uh, then we sent a contest to teachers, math teachers. The uh, students write the contest and then they send the contest to us. We uh, grade the contests and then we send certificates for uh, each student uh, to receive the certificate of participation. Uh, we uh, have, after grading all contests, we uh, determine the uh, winners, top winners, uh, national winners and they receive the certificates for first place, second place, and third place. And all uh, teachers uh, who prepare students, they receive certificate of appreciation. And we had uh, one uh, elder, uh, Elder Ken uh, Goodwill. He helped me a lot at the beginning when I started this project, and I received his guidelines and blessings for the project and uh, eight years ago he passed away and since that we've uh, established the memorial of art on his uh, name uh, elder ken goodwill uh, memorial of art and mm -hmm. uh, so now uh, the schools receive those awards for the best performance not just the students but schools as well mm -hmm. and uh, over i can tell you that over these years over 10 years uh, we have thousands of students participated in this project and I made the uh, kind of like map of the project and you can see that almost from everywhere in Canada we have the schools participated mm -hmm. in the project. Some, some teachers uh, use uh, materials for extracurricular activities. Actually that was the teacher's demand that we extended the age, uh, we, at the beginning we had grade 4 and 5, then teachers asked us and we extended it to grade 6. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, a, and many institutions, scientific organizations, they recognize the project. Uh, and um, uh, we received, uh, two years ago, we received the award from um, ECE Saskatchewan. It's called the uh, Regional Center of Expertise on Education for Sustainable Development. This award was released by United Nations University. So that was in 2016. Even some <laughs> politicians, they recognize the project and I found some uh, MPs, they uh, mentioned about our project. They mm -hmm. found it very helpful for First Nations schools. Yeah, what is, what is again, uh, I would say, uh, two kind of uniqueness of this project. Uh, first of all, this is the uh, first mathematics contest specifically for First Nation schools. And uh, before, I, I mean, there are many mathematics contests in, in Canada and in North America, but this one is one, the first one specifically for First Nation schools. And uh, what inspired me to do this contest, it's a, you know, the f many First Nations communities and schools as well are kind of like isolated. 
and uh, uh, this project uh, built some network mm -hmm. and those schools all those uh, students teachers are connected uh, around this contest and there are traditionally schools they give the awards to students in their uh, in ceremonies they have kind of award ceremonies mm -hmm. and uh, I, I try to participate every year in one community I travel to the communities mm -hmm. and I meet the students one student told me that it was he was a grade four student it was very touching he said that uh, you know I, I, I didn't know that there are so many he didn't say First Nations or indigenous he said I didn't know that there are so many uh, Indians writing mathematics. So, the, you know, uh, it's really because they, uh, many of those communities, many of those, those students, uh, they never been outside of their, uh, you know, communities. They don't know too much uh, about other First Nations communities. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not a secret that uh, our days we have many problems, you know, many suicides and etc. But among those young Aboriginal people and uh, so one of the reasons is just that isolation, and I think it's, uh, this contest, uh, this project helps maybe a little bit to break that isolation. So that's what the program is intended to do? Yeah, first of all, I, I joined the First Nations University 10 years ago, yeah. Uh, not 10, uh, more than now, 11 years ago. I received the European education, kind of like Western type of education. I started doing some uh, community projects. I, I started uh, meeting uh, uh, indigenous people, First Nations, elders, mm -hmm. and we had many discussions. I mentioned about the uh, elder Ken Goodwill and many other elders. I, uh, I communicated with them uh, within my other project, more research projects. And what I've noticed, the existence of two problems. A one pro regarding the science. A one problem is the delivering of, um, let's call that uh, Western science mm -hmm. to uh, indigenous communities. And another problem, uh, receiving, uh, you know, learning the indigenous-based science, indigenous knowledge-based mm -hmm. science. So it, it, it has to be kind of like the, you know, the pro two processes and uh, we have to move toward each other. And this mathematics contest is kind of like one of the first steps for uh, bringing the science to First Nations uh, schools, to First Nations communities. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just the, one of the ways that we can bring that. Because, um, again, it's not a secret that many communities, uh, not only First Nations communities, I would say many rural communities, uh, they have problems with communication, with the internet, and etc. They are kind of like isolated. And uh, we try to bring this mathematics, at least, to uh, First Nation schools. And uh, not just uh, in, in the way that they, they learn mathematics in schools, that's not a problem. But mm -hmm. this is a little bit more competitive way, a little bit uh, different ideas, a little bit different format. So that's the and and it's a, it's very important that uh, students. It's not just the mathematics that you learn in school. It's something. It's mathematics that you can become a winner. You can receive a certificate, mm -hmm. and you can be a top winner in Canada. So you you, you can become a, a national leader. So that that the those components they are maybe secondary, but they they, they came over these ten years. Uh, that's they came to the project as well. But initially, uh, of course, we tried to bring a little bit different format of mathematics to schools. But I have to mention that th we use uh, uh, all these materials, all these contest materials are developed based on curriculum, Saskatchewan curriculum, and we use uh, some uh, other provinces curriculum. So that those all, uh, we, we don't go outside of the curriculum materials. The, everything is within the curriculum, but maybe a little bit different way, different format. So how do you measure the success of your program? As I mentioned, uh, since we started this project 10 years ago, thousands of students, mm -hmm. thousands of First Nations students, it's about 
uh, 3,000, I would say, maybe even more uh, students participated in this project. Every year, we have approximately, from year to year, we change, but between 200 and 500 students. So that's why I said about 3,000 students. Uh, we have, again, every year from 200 to 500 students mm-hmm. participate in the project. And uh, it's uh, and every year it's about tens of school First Nation schools, and from each school we have uh, at least one, two, or three mass teachers. They uh, receive the materials, so that's the uh, basically in mathematics it's very easy to mm-hmm. kind of like estimate that measure. It's uh, basically the number of students participating in the project. That's, and it's, it's growing. For, for, uh, we have uh, previous years, we, didn't, we never had a school from British Columbia. This year we have a student, so one school registered from British Columbia. Schools from uh, three provinces are more active, uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Ontario. These okay. are the most active. But uh, again, one year we had a school from uh, Nova Scotia, so we had that one. But more, again, as I mentioned, that Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, uh, some, some years Alberta as well. So that's the... Um, we try to extend that, uh, the geography of uh, the contest. So maybe I'll talk about that later. Okay. Do you have, like, some form of evaluation for the program? Like, um, do, you, do you get feedback? Oh, yeah. As I receive, uh, every year I receive lots of comments from... Uh, teachers mainly, even some uh, parents, Mm -hmm. I receive them. I kind of like uh, monitor the uh, newspapers. I've seen some local newspapers in local media. I see the comments, the very good feedback. Mm -hmm. We have uh, on the hallway, you can see some uh, pictures and uh, I have in my computer some newspapers articles that where the student teachers they gave the interviews and they talked about the project mm-hmm. and yeah we, we always consider and we uh, change a little bit the format let's say a uh, number of questions and as I mentioned we extended uh, to grade six that's all we consider the feedback of from teachers and we try to consider them definitely we we consider the uh, we monitor that the uh, feedback and and very often uh, I communicate with teachers by email. They send me their comments too. Also, we have our uh, website uh, on the um, social media. We have a Facebook website, mm-hmm. and uh, I see some comments. People send me the comments to my personal email address as well. In your opinion, uh, what is indigenous education? Um, that's the uh, second part uh, of uh, what I, I mentioned uh, at the beginning. Yeah. So we have a kind of like, we try to deliver uh, this uh, modern science mathematics to uh, First Nations schools, indigenous schools. And another, another way is to take something from indigenous knowledge indigenous education and it's very important too it's not only for first nations people mm-hmm. it's important for everyone since i joined the first nations university i have done many community based projects research projects a science uh, math uh, the project about mathematical modeling and i used uh, indigenous knowledge for developing the mathematical model of water quality mm-hmm. it's a very modern project and and it's very alarming problem the water quality and uh, uh, just using the uh, again the so-called western science uh, we cannot develop very reliable predictive model of let's say water quality of uh, not only water quality but uh, ecological uh, processes and we need to use indigenous knowledge for that and another the same uh, similarly, we need to use uh, indigenous experience in education. Last semester, I taught one uh, educational mathematics course. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was uh, I, I'm really thankful that uh, program uh, leaders they gave me that opportunity. 
most of my students they were um, indigenous students first nation from first nations communities yeah. and uh, I asked them to bring some indigenous elements in indigenous content for teaching mathematics and they brought some uh, they uh, they've tried to find them in their community they asked their elders uh, you know parents and each of those students they brought uh, one or two uh, exa kind of like mostly that was the manipulatives or games and etc and they were very really interesting first of all mm -hmm. and second of all they would they were very helpful for understanding the mathematical concept they have a uh, many games let's say about the probability mm -hmm. that could help you to understand the probability or about empirical studies or about uh, even simple addition multiplication i'm going to use them in future uh, those elements indigenous elements in education again those elements those examples they could be used in uh, uh, mainstream schools, not only in indigenous schools, and that's that's the very important. And we have, luckily, in at First Nations University, we have a uh, many uh, indigenous uh, scholars, uh, educators. I communicate with them. I try to learn from them about the indigenous pedagogy, uh, indigenous way of teaching. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, uh, there are lots of things that so-called Western education could take and use it. What is your vision for the future of indigenous education in the, in the community and in Canada? Yeah, that's what I was kind of continuing that what I told previously. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have to use those indigenous uh, element components in uh, teaching at uh, First Nation schools, indigenous schools, and most of our students are uh, indigenous uh, people, and uh, we have to teach them that they, when they go back to their communities, they could use those elements. That's first. But I, I do not think it has to be something a local knowledge. It has to be. It can become national, nation, nationwide process. And uh, again, there are lots of interesting experience, interesting ideas, interesting examples that we could take and use them in our uh, mainstream schools. And uh, um, one more example, I'm collaborating with my colleagues from University of Regina. We are, within that project, uh, we will develop the um, indigenous-based example, indigenous content, uh, for teaching in teaching statistics courses uh, at First Nations University and the University of Regina. Uh, we are teaching, we are offering the stats course, statistics courses at introductory level. And we will develop the examples specifically for those courses. I mean, we are doing now, in, in that project is in process. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, interview elders and uh, uh, indigenous knowledge keepers and develop those examples, like about the, I mentioned about the probability, about empirical studies, about evaluation of uh, environmental processes like water quality and temperature change and etc. So those we can bring and we ha I think we have to bring to so-called Western science and use that. And basically uh, my kind of like that's my credo, my uh, understanding is that uh, as a person uh, which who, who grew up inside of the Western science and then the last 11 years uh, uh, I, I've been working at First Nations University, mm -hmm. uh, I do not think uh, we have to kind of like emphasize and kind of like say that, okay, this is a Western science, this is indigenous science. And no, there is a science, but there are different views, different way of understanding. But mm -hmm. at the end, we were coming to the same uh, result, to the same conclusion but maybe in different ways. And, and more ways, more diversity we have in understanding of the concept is better for everyone, for both, I mean, for indigenous and for non-indigenous mm -hmm. people. And uh, lastly, can you think of any types of information that if you had now, it would help to achieve your vision? Uh, sorry? 
Um, are there any types of information that if you had now it would help you uh, with your vision with, uh, with the program? I, I, I think that was one of the question, one of the problems I mentioned that the communication in general in society we, it's very interesting in, in our days because of the new technologies and etc we have many ways of communication mm -hmm. but in spite of that people are getting more isolated it's very interesting I mean when two people have, didn't have a cell phone it looks like they communicated even more than now when you have a phone you can call any time to your friends, to your parents, but you don't do that that often, actually. It looks like pr before, we you used to do that more often. We have these many, many new technologies for uh, improving the communication. I think we have to use that, and we have to uh, improve the level of our communication with uh, indigenous communities, indigenous schools. The information, and, and I, I try to use any opportunity for delivering this information, and particularly about this project. Mm -hmm. Some years, uh, um, the non-indigenous schools, they wanted to participate in the project. I, I was very open for them, uh, because it helps to, uh, you know, uh, to increase the um, Geography to extend the geography of the project, and uh, more people are involved in the project. That's uh, I think it's good for uh, our communities and for indigenous communities. Um, again, I, I I would share that information for uh, mm -hmm. if your website, your resources give that opportunity, that would be great. And aside from the programs in which you are personally involved, yeah. uh, what information do you have on other indigenous educational programs in Canada? Mostly I'm uh, aware of um, educational programs uh, that are developed by, uh, in our university. I know about those. Uh, we have, a, I know that First Nations University organizes the summer camps for indigenous uh, students of high schools. Mm -hmm. um, my department had uh, Professor Joanne Good Goodpipe, for example. I, uh, she organized that. I know about the uh, National Science Camp uh, last year. Uh, that w uh, it's it's organized by INAC, mm -hmm. and last year, uh, uh, my university, First Nations University. Of Canada held that camp, and uh, I volunteered. I participated in that. I think that those type of projects are very important. Science and mathematics is uh, kind of like uh, one of these. There are lots of things to improve, but those those are two areas that really need to be improved mm -hmm. and to be um, extended to indigenous communities. And yeah, I know about those projects, and I have some information uh, about the projects developed by University of Regina. So yeah, that's the. But again, uh, in some of them I I I participate myself, and uh, about some of them I I hear from media.